Guys, what is up? This is Rex Chief 117 here, and this is the first episode of Machinera. Blah, blah, blah. I've mucked that up in draw big time! Yay! Award for unsuccessfulness! Um, anyway, now yeah, first episode of Machinima Reviews. Right, oh, that's a terrible intro. Um, anyway, first episode is Rise of the Spartans Part 1 by Arbiter 617. Now, one day I was just searching YouTube, looking for things to watch, and I saw this this film I didn't know what they were called back then but I saw this film called on YouTube it was called Battle for Earth or Battle of Earth so I watched that and I thought yeah this is pretty good and then I saw Rise of the Spines so I thought oh, I'll see what this is about and I'm in about the first, I, I don't know, five minutes, I thought this is the most amazing machinima I have ever seen. I mean, the first five minutes gets you hooked into it almost immediately. Because, I mean, if you're a fan of Halo and you haven't seen Rise of the Spartans, I'm begging you, go and watch it now. Put in Rise of the Spartans Part 1 because it is amazing. The first five minutes is just... The camera work and voices are just great, and it just it's it's amazing. It's it's basically the story is part one is um about uh I think it's five five or six Spartans who are defending Reach, even though they know it is going to fall and they can't do anything about it. So the squad leader, Night Flash, is going to is going to try and get his squad off off reach before it I don't know implodes or something. I mean, and the voice acting and is great. The music really it it really it, it expresses the scenes really well. The editing and the and all that is amazing. Um, and it's the the battle scenes are great, and the music they use for the battles. It, I mean, there's a ba battle scene quite near the beginning with Ocelot and Whisper, with loads and loads of elites, and the music sort of the Halo C E theme music. But it's sort of mixed up a little, and it sounds really good. Um, yeah, so all that. Then they go to, and the I mean the use of the missions because they in the, in the first part they use the mission where you're in the Falcon and you're going over the city. They use that mission for one of the scenes. Which I mean, it's good to have. It's good having using the missions because everything's there. You don't have to sort anything out. The scene is set already, and it's amazing. The I mean, there there are a lot about. I think there's three main big battle scenes. There's the first one, on um. I think they used firefight for that. Uh, the second one was they used custom game in Xbox Live, which is great. The third one was a map you can get on Xbox Live, which is sort of sand, not sand, um, uh, snow, and they use, and there's a lot of people there, and you do get to meet, I mean, the Spartans is Night Flash, Swift, Brass, Whisper, and Ocelot. They're the, they're the Spartans. You mean Blake? <coughs> you mean Blake? Which is, I think, CEO of Trident Industries. Who, and there's Teleport. And normally, I think, as 
Dodo will say in his review in a minute. Teleporters don't really work that well because you can't really control when you go through them. But the way Arbiter has edited it is just, it's made it much, much better because it makes it seem like the teleporter sort of programming him to take him where he wants to go. Well, supposed to, anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, the reason I wanted to watch the second part is because I mean, the first part ends on a cliffhanger. You can't just stop at part one because it sort of finishes. It it the story's incomplete at part one, so you have to watch the second part to understand what's going on, because you don't know where they're going. They could be going anywhere. So, I mean, it's... I mean, I think it'd be great as, like, a proper movie. But, you know, that's, 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 bas that's pretty much it for me, guys. Uh, I'll let Deldor talk about what he wants, what he likes about it. So, to Deldor! What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Deldor. And this is my review on Ruts, or Rise of the Spartans, Part 1. To begin with, Rise of the Spartans feels like Halo right from the beginning. So the music, the feel, the ODSTs, it, it just feels like Halo. Not, not, a, maybe probably, not in the sense of the Ringworld Halo, but it feels like Halo, the, the whole lore to it. Which I find, which is typically what I like best in watching my mission of us. And um, right off the bat, you get um, a dramatic feel from them that uh, that I, I feel like all, all mission of us should have. And. Um, and you're introduced to um, some new char some new characters later on. It um, is a really good, really good battle sequence. I've I'd think there's a lot of big battles and great, great very well done. And uh, I feel like the camera angles were very well done. Probably they don't all follow um, a rule I've learned of. I forgot the name of it, but they all fit it very well, and it doesn't look very it doesn't look distorted or anything. It just it it doesn't make your eyes crazy or anything. And um, well, I feel there's like some editing that I really liked that was done in here. There's some dramatic shots that I I really liked. Some special effects that were that were fairly neat, even simple but very very cool in my opinion. And you're introduced some to some. Spartans and they got a story that is unique to me very unique um especially one that I wouldn't have found in a book that I have read and um if it, it's like the story is a mystery at the beginning and later becomes unveiled in other episodes because I've watched it um the Spartans you encounter are Ocelot um Whisper Brass, Nightflash, and Swift. A good group of Spartans um, that have been left to defend Reach in its dying hours. Well, Nightflash, the team leader, says bull to that, which I find very, very interesting just because I never thought a Spartan would do that. Just knew that was just crazy talk very very crazy i did not see a spartan doing that that made it the series just this episode anyway just very interesting to me because this the spartans are unique characters and um let's start well the it has a sort of reach feel since it is in reach which is very which is nice it's a I don't, I don't think Reach was quite treated too right with that feel, but it feels nice in this, and it later goes on to feel like um 
Well, uh, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm doing this right off the bat. Um, well, um, well, sort of some relationships I can see that are that are very. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, difficult relationships, anyway. At least so. some characters seem closer to others and agree with others, while others are difficult to uh, get along with. And there's just a lot of extra stuff that I believe was very cool in watching this. Kind of made it a little more entertaining for myself, anyway. And uh, around the end, when I encounter going to a teleporter, which I believe is a great thing to implement into um, to the uh, machinima, because those are typically avoided, which I found very, very cool. And um, I just loved the battle scene at the end, and I didn't quite like it as much during the uh, in middle of the... Uh, courtyard I think it was. Although at the end I felt like there was a lot of great shots. It felt great at the end. And they really did love the um, phantoms at the end. Uh, he added, it, it helped add to the effect in my opinion. There's a lot of, lot of cool stuff here. Yeah, and the this is a audio recording for a review for Rise of the Spartans Part 1, Halo Machinima by Arbiter617. So in this review, I'll be talking about several different topics such as voice acting, overall sound, cinematography, body acting, uniqueness and originality, and writing. So let's start off with voice acting. So the whole Machinima opens up as a whole action sequence in a, in a firefight map. And there are several soldiers that are trying to figure out a way how to escape the situation they're in and pretty much keep themselves away from harm. But it is depicted as a extremely intense and high, high volume of action type of scene. But the characters do not give off the emotional attachment to the situation. I'll give you an example, such as, oh my, like, there's a hunter... Uh, coming after you and then the voice actors just they're talking like I I'm talking now as if there's no there's no nothing to be feared of it's like the hunter is an easy thing to ch to handle which I mean if we play if we all play Halo not really they the characters don't depict situations well because they don't really have a I would say a, um, a wide variety in how the voice actors are supposed to present their lines um there's nothing really outstanding about the voice work as well. I mean, everyone else, everyone in the, everyone in the first episode pretty much is like using their actual voice, not, not, not really displacing their actual voice to present a whole new character. Like I'm using this voice to, to voice act right now and say a few lines. I'm not going to change it up. I mean, that's typically what it, what their voice actors presented, presented as. <laughs> Also, with the voice acting, it is complete. It is it is really inconsistent among all the characters, but in a way that's some, that's a lot easier to understand because some people have different equipment from other people. Especially myself and rock band microphone, and some people have like high dollar, two hundred dollar microphones. But at least to the point, trying to keep it consistent because. One in one instance, you're hearing someone who's blasting the microphone like this, and then you hear other people saying, "Oh, hi guys!" Uh, it was like really jarbled up audio quality. Um, one thing I also like to point out is <clears throat> Night Flash's voice actor, the the Green Spartan. He is supposed to be this rookie leader, but still a leader. But the voice actor does not play that role correctly in my in my personal opinion um if if i had a example here i would show it but i don't there was this one case where they were they were just about to head into the portal and then they're all going out all five of them are going out to get to to extract a bomb to place it 
So when the Covenant comes, they can blow up the entire building. When Night Flash is trying to direct other people what to do, again, it's it's another situation where it's a really high intense scene, but the voice actor does not display it well with their voice work. So, overall, voice acting, it's okay to start off with. It could be a lot better from for what it is. I, I'm assuming so. A high person production machinima, especially what we first saw throughout all the action scenes. But th- it, it, it kind of feels that the action somewhat uh, compensates for the lack of good voice work. I mean, it's okay. There's some, there are some people who are pretty much outstanding, but everyone else is pretty much standard in that no one really. It's kind of hard to depict uh, characters from each other since, again, they don't. There's no variety in what what they sound like. Only a few of them actually try to voice act. So along with voice acting and and audio, kind of sick. We will jump over to overall sound. So here I'll be covering music, um, how the audio was edited and whatnot. Just just not focusing on voice acting at all. So. Early on in the heavy action scenes, you 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 can hear it's it's kind of hard to hear the voice actor's audio because the music is a bit too loud. Now that is a big problem considering machinima and or anything anything film related or whatever have you. The music should never ever ever be equally or louder than the voice actor's audio because I mean. They're saying dialogue. It's very important to the story to say. So, having music equally or louder, especially um, in the early goings of this of this uh, first part of Machinima in the action scenes, it's a it's a very apparent that you can see that not much went to the editing of the audio to make sure it's you can still hear the music, but you can also have the voice actors. Um, audio play well with the music it's just not the music and the voice actors audio isn't battling with each other to try to uh see which one can present itself to be louder so that that's one big thing that i noticed throughout this first part and that's one issue that hopefully i wish they fixed the entire part because i'll be honest here the first part didn't really grab me as much because i mean the story isn't all that interesting but i'll get that to in writing um, let's see. Oh, there there also have been scenes where in-game audio has been completely cut from a scene. Like, for example, um, gunfight in the background was not edited well because there would just be scenes where there's just a bunch of gunfighting and then all of a sudden silence. There's no transition from the sound of the, of gunfire dying down and then switching over to the scene where it's just quiet and it's just dialogue. It has to be smooth smooth transition along with there has to be smooth tra- transition through both video and audio and that's I feel they didn't get that right in this first part um what else uh, I mentioned inconsistent voice acting oh and the rain sound effect during the during the whole um what's that map called reflection the whole reflection scene when the two characters are outside discussing why, uh, what are they going to do after the war? The rain is too damn loud. <laughs> There's no other way I can say that. The rain is too loud. I, 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 well, it's not necessarily going with the music, but it's still going on from what I said earlier about how the music and the character audio should not be on the same level or or the background noise or music should be louder than the character's audio. Again, a big problem. It's raining, and then your one character is trying to say their lines, and then I could imagine if if they're the character coming out of the whole building, well, the rain is loud as loud as it is, and then uh, the other character who's already outside saying what? I can't hear you. The rain's too goddamn loud. My audio is bumping up, so let me lower that down. <clears throat> so if I were to generalize sound, I would give that maybe a. Uh, out of five, two point seven five out of five. I mean, 
Because they chose good soundtracks to use, especially ones from earlier Halo 3 uh, official soundtracks. But the editing of it could have been a lot better than it was. And also the voice acting is not as impressive as I wish it was. So, moving on from sound, we're going to now tackle body acting. Now, this this pretty, this pretty whole topic talks about... Um, Everything from character movement, character editing, the scenes itself. This is pretty much just the movement of, of people throughout the scenes. And also talks about several scenes of which could have been done better, but that could have been under writing. But I would prefer to leaving under body acting. So, first point is that this is this is a very specific example of very on was uh, there was an elite that came down. And then the two or three other private soldiers over there, they do not attack the elite full on, just so the main superhero protagonist can appear on screen. So what I'm saying is that, I don't remember correctly, but I believe the elite had a sword of some sort. And then they weren't attacking the elite full on, and the elite was walking towards him really slowly. And, I mean, that's a bit forced just to have the main character come out as like a whole big scene saying that, Oh, this guy's something. This guy's considered to be an inter- interesting person throughout the entire story because of how he, how his entrance was portrayed. Again, this this goes on to the cliche of action movies, for uh, main protagonists need big entrances just to be known, and that's a big problem. That's because that's a bit forced. And if they want to stand out from the rest, which I'm really hope that that's what they're going for, not just to be a. Uh, a really average action movie. They didn't really need to f- uh, force that. I mean, they could have done something better with that instead of having some fake grand opening for this main protagonist, which I forgot the name of. <clears throat> uh, what's another point? Oh, this is not a this is not really an issue per se. But I mean, it's kind of obvious that they did this over Xbox Live. I mean, that's not that's not really a problem, but it is a overall it's not a big problem but it's a problem during dialogue scenes because as as several people have said in machinima you know how to videos it's a problem when two character when characters are talking to each other and their guns and point are pointing at each other i mean there isn't much you can do with over xbox live to do that but if they really wanted this to be a really good production they could have taken the time um offline Having only, having edited those scenes where it's just dialogue with few action scenes just so the guns are really pointing to each other. Now, some people might think that's a lot of effort, but for me personally, as a as my <clears throat> as a machinima creator myself, I would put in the time to do that just because it takes away the realism that I'm trying to add in as well with the story. <laughs> like, as many of you all know, John Graham, who created Army the Chief, uh. One one life remaining, hard justice. He said in several uh, Mich- Machinima How To videos that he made, like uh, how characters when when people don't lower their guns and how characters are just pointing guns at each other. That's somewhat of a problem because how you always see that someone's forcibly able to shoot you and turn a little dialogue and all of a sudden boom, snap, and gunshot right to the head. So, I mean, they could have taken the time to have edited that in, done that offline themselves, but. Uh, they could have just done the action scenes over Xbox Live. I mean, if I ever need an action scene, I would have done that. Just done it over Xbox Live. If it's a, like, 16-person action scene, then I would have probably done gone that route and then just edited offline scenes. Um, let's see. Oh, they also decided to go with the empty energy sword approach for having no weapons. Again, not really a problem, but with the stance and not being able to lower your weapons, it always seems that some they're about to jump at you. Just, just another small mich- machinima problem, and the limitation of being machinima in Halo, is that you can't really depict people just walking normally without having a gun in their hands, but... Uh... Maybe that's the best that they could have done over Xbox Live. Again, they could have taken the time offline to, you know, have everyone hold plasma pistols or something, or just still have done the empty energy sword approach and have them lower their weapons that way. But... 
um, that's still like a high person scene, so I guess they didn't really want to do it offline. Uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I should have picked out another writing song. So, that's pretty much it for body acting. Uh, knowing that it's done over Xbox Live, I'll give them props for that, and also having high, high action scenes with a bunch of a bunch of uh, people in it. Uh, I mean, you got to give it to that. So I'll give, I'll give body acting three point five out of back. Um, now jump to writing, which is a really big action. Um, so you can use the first part. You see the typical mode, which is a really, really depth story in it. Which also leads to characters not really having their own personality, being, being their own type of person, being diverse. It also said characters had the same motives, the same, um, the same desires. That really doesn't appeal to me, especially someone who has watched Machinima for ever since like the early Halo 3 days. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of like a cheap kind of... You, you would say it's like... Um, how would I say it? Uh... Just a really cheap military shooter that's just there for the action. I mean, I'm just depicting this as part. I'm just reviewing this as for part one. I mean, it could could have been a lot deeper in like later parts. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here, but I can't off the top of my head. But again, it's your typical military sh uh, machinima. Not nothing too interesting up to this point, because also the voice actors didn't really do that great of a job to reel more people in i mean with the with the high action since it's a money and real cheap one even if somebody g a bot with the right and some of the stuff at a bigger set recipe don't have high action so i wouldn't fall i'll give, give uh, rise to the stars i mean it could it could go a lot better but i'm just reviewing this as part one so <clears throat> uh Oh, also, there's no, there's no backstory to start the foundation. There, there's no backstory to this entire thing, where it op immediately opens up saying it's not part of the Halo series, so there's nothing to fall back on saying, oh, they're coming from this. But they open up with an action scene that lasts about six to seven minutes, and then they try to go into story, but no, I take that back. <laughs> action scene does not even last at least six, six minutes. That goes far and beyond. The story doesn't really kick in until they actually, until the characters fly off to reflection. They try to argue, uh, why they battle in the Covenant. Uh, I mean, what, what, what the purpose is and what are they going to do afterwards. But, they also use a bunch of, a, a bunch of, uh, story arcs that are from the Halo franchise and saying they're not from the Halo series. I mean, it's, it's a little confusing in my, in my point. But, uh, oh yeah, with the lack of a backstory, when the story tries to explain them, explain itself, it kind of gets a little confusing because there's nothing to fall back on saying, oh, they're referring to this, they're referring to that. It's just like they're pulling information out of their ass, essentially. But, again, it could go into bigger depth later on, but, I mean, this whole first part was essentially trying to reel people in the, to this series, which using action then later on they would jump into story which i would say it's somewhat of a big problem because you you pretty much reeled in the wrong audience if you're just re if you're reeling in people for in the first couple of episodes and then all of a sudden you go deep into story i mean a, g a good example of that is when arby the chief or when arby the chief went from a very comedic kind of series and then they jumped into serious story I mean that, I believe that's season five room where the time that happened. That's when the the viewership of that series be, began and went down. But you can't really fault John for uh, trying to do something different. But this is this already starts off as a whole action action machinima with not a lot of story to drag more people in to to keep it interesting. You, you can't really de depend highly much on action scenes. Because eventually they're just going to get really boring, really tiresome, very predictable. And then without a story, you, you're you not really going to keep people interested seeing this to wonder what's going to happen in the end. Uh, also, another cliche I like to point out was there's very 
there's too many pointless one-liner after kills, you know. Uh, one I would like to, one good example that I've been playing, uh, Elite, when he goes and he ran over the hologram. Elite runs into the wall, and then the real person who set off the hologram starts attacking the Elite and the, and the ghost. And then he says something like, uh, put that on your, um... Anyway, guys, that was episode one of Thoughts On. That was Thoughts On Rise of the Spartans part one. Stay tuned for episode two, which will be out shortly. Not shortly. I don't know when it'll be out. It'll be out when, it's, when it is. Doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, just stay tuned for that. Like this, share, subscribe. You know what to do. All that stuff. And, well... That's it. Peace.